What's going on guys, Ramez here. I want to quickly summarize core principle number three, which is protect, correct, develop. Now I've adopted this principle from continuous training in the functional movement systems, but it was also heavily emphasized in my orthopedic manual therapy training. And protect essentially stands for the Hippocratic Oath of let's first do no harm. Let's essentially play defense before we play offense and try to correct movement dysfunction. So we're essentially trying to remove or minimize potential environmental triggers or complicating factors from the environment. So for example, we'll look at someone's training environment and we'll ask a simple question. Does this person demonstrate the prerequisites to perform the activities that they're trying to perform? So for example, can their joints get into the right positions that the exercise is requiring them to get into? So that can be a big reason why someone tightens up, for example. So all the mobility techniques in the world aren't going to give us long-term results if that initial issue is not addressed. Another thing to look at and consider is training volume and loads. So is this person overtraining? Are the volume and loads that they are exposing their bodies to exceeding their body's capacity for stress? A lot of times when I ask athletes or active individuals to provide me with their training programs, which should give me volume and load progressions, they don't have that information readily available. And that, quite frankly, is a problem, even if I'm dealing with an orthopedic issue, because I don't know whether it's a truly an orthopedic problem or if it's an orthopedic problem that has resulted from overtraining or improper progression of volume and loads. So that information is really important for me in terms of protect and initiating any type of intervention. The other thing to consider is uh, how the person spends the rest of their day outside of training. So what's going on the other 23 hours of the day? How is this person sleeping? What positions are they sleeping in? Uh, what do their ergonomics look like? Uh, how are they sleeping? How are they sitting in their car, excuse me? Are they moving just basic movement throughout the day? Or are they sitting for six, seven, eight hours a day? I don't care how fit you are, sitting for that long all the time is going to bring us certain stresses that training will never be able to outweigh. So that's basically what protect is. We're really looking and analyzing the person's environment and making sure that those variables are not undermining what we try to do in the correct and developed stages. Correct is essentially addressing weak links. So we're looking at mobility, stability, and movement patterns like we do with screening and assessment. And the ones that we are disconnected from, we try to help people reconnect to those. And then we progressively push them towards capacity training within those patterns in an intelligent and strategic way. Now the movement patterns that you demonstrate ownership of, we progressively develop strength and endurance within those patterns. And we start to blend, correct, and develop, and superset some of these corrective exercises and some of these capacity exercises so that it becomes a lot more fun and um, interesting rather than being regimented and thinking that we need to have perfect, correct movement before we sweat and have a good workout or good training session. So that's essentially protect, correct, develop in a nutshell. Protect people from their environment, correct the weak links, and progressively move them towards fitness and capacity and loads. Thanks for listening.